Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new and you're stopping by for the first time, welcome. I would love it if you would stick around by clicking the red subscribe button and then tapping the bell and all to be notified every single time I upload. If you like Dollar Tree DIYs, Trash to Treasure, and Farmhouse DIYs, on a budget for your home decor. I would also love it if you could please give me a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Those thumbs up really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me just a bit more. So for today I have four Dollar Tree farmhouse bathroom DIYs. So let's jump right into today's video. I want to be daring, baby, dance the night away I let my head down if I won to start off, I had this frame from a previous project. I had already take the, taken the staples out. This is actually a canvas. So I just showed you that I have this staple puller. I got it from Walmart. So I, again, I had these just sitting around, but it's really easy to pull the staples. If you don't have a staple puller, just be really careful when you're doing it. And then you take the canvas off. So I take my favorite stain, Jayco bean, and I just make sure you have gloves on so I put my gloves on and then I get a paper towel. I notice that this is pretty rough so I do go in with my finger sander which is linked down below in my Amazon favorites and I just give that a quick um, sanding just so that way the stain um, sticks to it a little bit better. So or actually it's just easier to apply. So I just take my paper towel I dip it in my stain and I just stain it that way and then um, I just left it because this was so rough but if this was a smoother surface if you wanted it a little bit lighter then you would just take a different paper towel and wipe off the excess so I did that to um, all the sides except for the back next I had this pot and it's a half a pot it's plastic. I got it from Dollar Tree. I also used this in a previous project. And then I take my sterling silver in acrylic paint. I also got that from Walmart. And I just give this pot a nice coating of this silver paint. So after I painted it, I just went back over and made sure that it was nice and smooth just by um, going with my brush in one direction, painting downwards. So while my pot is drying, I had this also left over from a project. This is from my um, flower market sign and I used the truck and then this was hanging off the truck. It was from the Easter trucks from Dollar Tree and I originally painted it when I was doing that project thinking that I might use it and I never did. So I just take that, I give it a couple good coats of white Waverly chalk paint and I let it dry in between coats. So after I do this one, then I move on to my popsicle sticks. You're going to need 10 large popsicle sticks. And I did get these from Walmart as well. So I also go gave those two good coats of white Waverly chalk paint. So I set these aside to dry. And then I'm just showing you the natural sponges that I use, again, from Walmart. And um, I've gotten questions about these before, so I just wanted to show you what the packaging looks like. But I just take one of the natural sponges, I dab it in my Elephant Waverly Chalk Paint, I dab off the excess, and then I just go over the entire pot over top the silver and just dull that silver down. Now this galvanizing technique is pretty much your preference so you just gotta dab and look at it and then go back in um, on spots that you missed or that you want um, covered so after I do the elephant I do the same thing with the white I just don't go as much as I do with the elephant just because the white is just supposed to offset it just a little bit and it gives this white is the part that gives this the illusion that it is galvanized metal and I don't know about you guys but I it's just so satisfying the way this turns out. So after I did my um, white 
Waverly chalk paint. I did this in my previous video when I used these pots too. I do not like that decoration that is around the rim, so I do take some buffalo check ribbon and I just glue the side around the back. I then measure how much I'm going to need with some um, another piece around the back and this just holds it down really nicely and then I cut it and take my hot glue gun and just run a bead across that um, lip and then glue down the buffalo check ribbon and then glue it down in the back as well. So because this is a curved um, surface, the ribbon does kind of wrinkle up a little bit in the middle. So I did just go ahead and make a simple bow. I have um, a part in a video where I showed you guys how to do this bow and I'll leave it in the cards up above. So after I made my bow, I just glued that down. So now we're gonna work back on this sign. I do um, just run a bead of hot glue on each side and then place my popsicle sticks down. And I did see um, Bargain Bethany do this. I think she did it a little bit differently. And um, I just wanted to mention that I did see her do it, but I actually did have this DIY planned before she did it. But I did want to mention that Bargain Bethany did do something similar to this. So after I have my popsicle sticks down, I did leave one off and we'll do that one after this step, but you need that one off so that way you can tie your hanging sign to this, uh, to the bigger sign. So this piece was just a little bit too long. I measured where I wanted it and then I took a roller, just put it up against there and I scored it a few times with a knife and then I did, I was able to bend it and then take my knife again, run it in the back because the back is kind of like paper and then it just comes right off, but the edges will be a little bit um, jagged. So I did take my finger sander and I sanded off the jagged edges. I then just clean up my space. I don't know about you guys, but I, I hate like dust sitting there. I have to get rid of it as soon as I, um, you know, make it. So <laughs> that's why you always see me a lot like cleaning up the little messes. But anyway, after I do that, I just um, size up where I want my holes. And then I go ahead and measure where the first hole is because I cut off the other hole. So I wanted to make sure that they were even. So I just measure it out and I mark where I want that hole to be. And then I just place it up against the wooden frame. And then I go ahead and mark the frame where I want to drill my holes. So after I have everything marked, I take my drill and a drill bit and I kind of just figure out um, which drill bit is going to fit in the original hole just so that way everything could look cohesive So I found the bit that I wanted and then I went in and I drilled holes where I marked Now whenever you're drilling holes, you definitely want to um, drill on a surface so that you don't like drill your fingers so for this end piece, I knew that it was far enough in that I could just hold it up and drill a hole. But for the wooden frame, I do go ahead and get something to place underneath. And then that way um, I can drill the hole straight down. And it, it's also just easier to do it this way as well. So after I have my holes drilled, I then work on the bottom hanging sign and I always like to like this is a stencil but I like to trace it on just because I have more control with these plastic stencils so I just uh, trace on farm fresh flowers and this is the sign that I'll be hanging down below so after I do that I then go in with my black ultra fine paint pen Actually, this is just a fine one. I go in with my fine paint, black paint pen and I go over that lettering. 
So after I go over that lettering, I do go in with some black Waverly chalk or ink Waverly chalk paint and my natural bristle brush. And I do dry brush all the way around the edges. Surprise, surprise. I love doing this. It just makes it look finished and old. I don't know about you, but when I'm looking at this without dry brushing, it just looks plain and dull. And I just think that by dry brushing, it really brings out the decor piece and it really gives you that farmhouse feel. So this is always optional. It's up to you, but I do love doing it. And if you've been around for any amount of time, you know that. So next we're going to attach our sign to the top one and I knew that I tried but I already knew that the twine would not go through it so I did just take some like a small piece of painters tape to the end and then you definitely want to make sure you're going from the back to the front and then that way you can go from the front of the top sign to the back and then put your knots in the back if not you would have had to put a piece of tape on the other side and personally trying to get this tape on the end end of twine to get it through something is kind of tricky so the less tape the better for me so once I have it strung through I then just make knots I make sure that it is hanging as much as I want I didn't want a really big hang I just wanted a small hang so that's why I have it so close to the top piece but again it's your preference if you want it a little bit longer just tie your knot a or make sure that it's hanging a little bit lower before you tie your knots also twine is kind of um, like it will stretch if you pull on it a little bit so if it's a little bit too tight try to tug on it and it will come loose a little bit more so after I tied that cut the ends I then just added that last piece of popsicle stick and then I take my hanger my sawtooth hanger this pack of hangers, it's all different kinds, is also linked in my Amazon favorites down in the description box, but I did not need to screw this in because it's very light, so I did just take some hot glue and attach it that way, and then I just put some hot glue over the top just to make sure that it stays put. Next, I just run a bead of hot glue kind of um, not exactly on the top of where I cut this but kind of like on the inside and the top if that makes sense and then I um, glued right where the ribbon meets the back just because I knew that is the spot where it will attach better just because with the thickness of the ribbon um, you can glue it much easier so next I just add some greenery and some floral and that is it for this sign. Let me know in the comments down below what you would put in this vase. Um, I wasn't too sure but because it said farm fresh flowers I did want to add a little bit of um, you know pink flowers just because it's springtime and I wanted to bring some spring colors into my bathroom and then maybe for summer I'll change it out. So moving on to the next project this is the large decorative vase and I got this last year at Valentine's Day from Dollar Tree. I did want to mention as well I did not go out for any of this stuff you guys. I have been in the house for like two weeks straight but I did go in my stash. You would not believe the stash that I have. I'm sure you guys have a large craft stash too so it's really much better just to kind of shop your stash and um, make over things that you already have but anyway I did just go over that jar with a coat of Waverly chalk paint and then this jar was actually a candle and I just burned the candle down and then I boiled the rest I boiled a pot of water put this in there and then it um or actually I boiled some water I poured it in it let it dry and then you can just pop the wax right out of the top so I also gave that one a coat of white as well I did paint it um, tan before 
and I didn't like it so that's why I painted it white. So after I painted both and they dried, I also had that candlestick I painted black. Now this is not from Dollar Tree, but I know that Dollar Tree has them. I do have some, but they're already painted. So I just wanted to show you the technique that I used, but I did paint the whole thing black. I then just take my finger sander and I sand the white jars just to give it that old age look. And for this small jar, um, I kind of liked that because it was already painted brown when I used my sander it did um, instead of being clear through it's kind of dark and I actually really like that look but um, I just set, set those aside after they were um, distressed how I liked again distressing is your preference I then just take a small brush with some white Waverly ch chalk paint on the end and I just hold like the end of the brush at first and just accentuate all those um, like I guess designs on them and then I go in with the same brush and I just dry brush some more um, you can't sand this because it's black you're not gonna see so that's why I use the white next I work on my small jar and I just take these medium wooden unfinished beads. These are also linked down below. And I just put a bead of hot glue. I use my Cricut tweezers to get them where I want them. And I do put the holes next to each other. Um, I think that it just looks better that way. I don't know. Um, but I do that all the way around the rim of this small jar just to give it a different look and a different decorative accent. So after I have my small jar finished, I do go in with some E6000 and I did have a mask on because I'm pregnant. So um, I didn't want to inhale those fumes, but I just put a generous amount in the middle and then go in with some hot glue the e6000 is going to last and the hot glue is going to ensure that it sticks together rather quickly so that is it for that one you guys really quick and easy to get a really cute decor piece so moving on to the large decorative jar i just take the same exact buffalo check ribbon that i used on the farm fresh flower project and I just run a bead of hot glue around. Um, there was actually a spacing on this jar that was actually perfect for this. So I just um, glue it down and then I go all the way around and I glue it. And then once I get to the end, I cut it and then just glue what was hanging over. I did overlap it just a little bit just to make sure that it was that the whole thing was covered. So after I have that glued down, I did just make a simple twine bow and this is three pieces of twine and I made it the exact same way I made my bows. It was just tripled just because this is such a big jar. I didn't think that one layer of twine would have looked right. And that is it for that one you guys. I really love the way this turned out. This is actually on top of a corner cabinet in my bathroom and I love the way that it looks with the rest of my decor. Last but not least, we're going to take this let it snow sign. See, I told you that I uh, shopped my stash. This is from Christmas time. And whenever I see decor pieces like this, I do grab a bunch of them because I know that I could do so many different things. But I started by sanding off the Let It Snow. It was glittery. But as I painted it white, I noticed that I could still see the word snow. I guess it was like indented into this. So I did just take a gray piece of scrapbook paper. I got this from my, uh, Michael's. Sorry, I was going to say Hobby Lobby and then Michael's. I, I don't know. But anyway, I just measure it onto the piece of paper, cut it out, and then I do go around the edges with some ink Waverly chalk paint. And I did kind of want this to look like a set. My bathroom is Buffalo Check 
and it's got grays and blacks. So I did want all this stuff to um, match together. If your bathroom is a little bit different, you can change it up by changing up the ribbon or the colors. Um, there's so many different options. So next I just take my disappearing purple glue stick. I love using this rather than Mod Podge because Mod Podge tends to make things wrinkle and this does not. You get a nice smooth piece. So especially when you're stenciling stuff on and going over it with a paint pen, you definitely need a really smooth surface. After I have that glued on, I then just go ahead and make sure that it's in the spot that I want. I then just take both my hands and smooth it down. I did go on my computer and print out farmhouse bathroom. Please seat yourself and I will have all the information of the font and the font sizes down below. So after I printed it out, I cut it out. And then I went ahead and used my graphite paper, which is also linked in my Amazon favorites. And I go ahead and trace that on. After I trace it on, I take my ultra fine black paint pen from Walmart. I mentioned this in a previous video. I used to get my paint pens off of Amazon, but the more that I use them, I realized that the ones from Walmart may be a little bit pricier but they definitely last longer and they're definitely much better quality and much easier to work with so I just go over that with my black paint pen and then I had this little tiny cow stencil also from Walmart and it is the Waverly brand it's right in the paint section with the other stencils and it comes in a pack of um, I think like six or seven different stencils but I then just take some ink Waverly chalk paint and stencil that on. I then pull that cow stencil off and these are kind of tricky. Um, they're not the best quality. They're not the worst either, but you just want to be careful when pulling up these stencils if you do go ahead and get some. And once again, I take my natural bristle brush. These are by Apple Barrel. They come in a pack of eight at Walmart for like five bucks. I definitely recommend them because I do rinse them out and get a couple uses out of the same brush. But I just dry brush around the edges as well. Last but not least, I just wanted to show you guys, this is the ribbon link down below and it's got so much on it. I've used it on so many different projects and I still have that whole roll left. So I just, again, made another simple bow, a smaller bow, and then glued that to the corner just to make it look a bit more finished and a bit more decorative. So that is it for this video, you guys. Thank you so, so much for sti sticking with me through this whole video. I know it's a little bit longer than my regular videos, but there was many steps involved. I cut them down and sped them up as much as possible, but... Please let me know which one was your favorite, which ones you guys will be recreating. Do you guys have these items in your stash or would you need to wait to get them when all this craziness is over? I hope everybody is feeling good and I have you guys all in my thoughts and prayers. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye.